back at Snappy Tomato Pizza Skyhawk Talk with Coach Jason Simpson. I want to say thanks to Ty, who was on the air. Uh, Coach, you mentioned that one of the things that changed you as a coach was becoming a father. Oh, yeah, no question. It's, yeah. it's uh, Now it's multiple father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that controls your day, no, no doubt about it. I mean, no, it does. It definitely, um, you know, it, uh, it softens you on some things. Uh, yeah, but it also makes you, uh, you know, protect your, your, your time a little differently for, uh, for sure. And mm-hmm. it makes you, I think, simplify a little bit a little bit of, um, you know, the thing that I realized is, and, and I have to work long hours. That's just part of, the, part of this. But, you know, there's nobody that's, that's going to know, uh, you know, how many hours that, uh, that it, you know, when I pass away, how many hours I worked in that office. Yeah. You know, but uh, hopefully the um, – the legacy I leave will be my children and, and the things that they do and in the, in their life and um, so obviously that's important that we make time for our family and uh, this is uh, a great environment community to be able to do that. Yeah, you know, you said that well. I heard a man say one time before their last breath, "No one ever says I should have worked more." <laughs> yeah, no question about it. And so, uh, although uh, you know losses hurt and they 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 stay with you for a while, but. Uh, you know, poor, like the, the youngest one, Graham, he doesn't know if we won or lost. So uh, <laughs> that's the one I gravitate to. Hey, don't underestimate him. I've hung out with him before. Um, you know, the, the thing that you do that I think that is phenomenal, that, that I see some coaches that when they're coach, they're coach. You know, they don't mm-hmm. mess with their family. But you have Ty with you on the field during mm-hmm. games. Uh, he travels. He rides the bus. He hangs out in practice. And, uh, and he is a part of your job, and he loves it. Well, that you know, and I hope, and, and Emma does to a certain extent, and then I, you know, being a girl, she's got her own interests and stuff, and hangs out with her friends and soccer, and uh, but you know, and I hope our youngest son does too. But that's you know, not it, it's twofold. One, uh, you know, obviously it's important to spend that time with your own children and and get to experience those things. I mean, that's uh, I get to I do something that uh, I enjoy doing for a living, and to be able to share that with him is really neat. Uh, but two, it, I think it's good for our players. It, it's good for our coaches and our players to uh, have their children around, uh, you know, our, our team. Because when we recruit these guys, you know, we say, hey, uh, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm going to be old enough to be some of these guys' dad. You know, I'm 40 years old now, so when I recruit an 18-year-old, um, you know, obviously uh, 10 years ago, you know, couldn't say that. And so if I say, hey, I'll treat you like my son, I'll treat you like a part of my family, uh, they need to, you know, they, they need to decide if they want to be a part of my family. You know, and when Ty gets his little tail <laughs> tore up for for being disrespectful, doing something he's not supposed to do, uh, you know, uh, but that's that's part of it. And our, and our players know that and, uh, and uh, you know, have kind of grown into that environment. You know, that that is very interesting that you say that because you do hang around with 18 and 19-year-olds a lot as a coach, but – um, there is a difference when you're coaching at 30 compared to when you're coaching at 40. No, oh, it is. It is. You, you know, um, you know. There's some things, like I said, that are some things always stay the same and don't change. But there's other things that you that you that you view as as life lessons that the kids have to learn. To where 10 years ago, maybe those were things that you just couldn't believe and you wouldn't get over, and uh, you you may even you know hold it against the kid that he made a mistake, whether it be on or off the field. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know. Well, as you get older as a coach and you mature, just like in, you know, any uh, teacher, principal, you know, uh, anybody that's dealing with kids, you know, you, you try to take those negatives and turn them into positive, positives and, and teach lessons. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the you know, day-to-day, uh, you know, operations. I've never asked you this question, but I'm curious, and I don't want you to name any names. When you're coaching in Little League or Youth League sports, the parents are constantly – you know, giving you uh, advice or questioning you or why didn't you handle my kid like this? Does it happen with college football players? Do the parents ever call you and, and want to know why their son's not getting more playing yeah. time? And you would think it wouldn't, but I guess it even goes on in the NFL. Yeah, but but but, but not as much as, you know, but maybe maybe twice a year. And when yeah. you're dealing with 95, 96 guys, and that's not a whole lot. It's really not. And, and I always say my policy is, you know, if your son comes and talks to me first, then I'll talk to you. Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't want somebody's parents, you know, calling behind a player's back and, you know, asking and stuff. And it embarrasses the player. Or you want to see the player grow up, take responsibilities. And if he's got a question, to come in your office and ask you about his, his specific lack of playing time or position change or what have you. Um, but 
I, I, but I, I've done this. Every time I've had a parent call me, I give them an answer. Yeah. I mean, I do, as long as they'll be respectful and, and let me talk and let me tell them, you know, why and what the situation is. And, and inevitably, at the end of the day, you know, you can't make everybody happy because, you know, one day my kids will be playing and, and everybody always thinks their child is, uh, you know, is Peyton Manning or, or <laughs> Walter Payton or whoever. You know, that's just that's what parents do. We, we have unconditional love. And, and, and so and, and I'm, I'm no different, even though I'm a coach. Mm-hmm. And so um, but as long as you're telling the truth, you don't beat around the bush uh, and you give them a, a, a hope of what their son needs to improve on. And maybe he has an opportunity to play. Uh, I think that's the, the best response you'll get. You ever had a player come to you and say, I want more playing time, what do I need to do? And you say you need to do A, B, and C, and they actually do A, B, and C and become a pretty good player? Yeah, I mean, um, not as much, though, because normally if it's if it's you know if it's that close and it's something that easy, you've already communicated that. True, that's true. And yeah. so, but, uh, you know, there's been cases where, you know, you say, okay, you've got to get stronger. And the guy would dedicate himself in the summer or the spring and, and have a chance to climb up the depth chart. Um, you know, you've got to be more focused. You know, those that kind of stuff is easy to fix. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're going to need to change positions. You know, you're not a you're not physical enough as to play defensive back. We think you need to move to receiver. You're not fast enough to play defensive line and quick twitch enough. We think you need to move to offensive line to 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 use your talents better that way so those are kind of easy changes and sometimes they're they're not they're they're they can be hard sales but most time kids want to play yeah they want to play and if you tell them this is what you got to do to play uh as a matter of fact that came up in staff meeting today was that you know you're fixing to go through 10 week period and we say that we've got depth and so when guys aren't good to play some uh you know those four quarters go by fast and and that's a game that a guy would never get back and it's hard for those third and fourth team guys to stay motivated, uh, you know, on Monday morning. So make sure that as coaches you're you're are, you know you're articulating to them the what 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 our plan is. Be honest to them, tell them what they've got to do to get better and what they've got to do to get on that depth chart. You ever had a really good player that didn't get a lot of playing time because there was a better player in front of them? Uh, yeah, and that's, and that's got to be frustrating for you and them. It's uh you know we, we, you, you think back over the last couple of years we had uh. Uh, Jet Howard was Josh Bay's backup. Oh, that's right. You Jet know, Howard was a good player. Jet's a good player, and now he's starting, starting role. But, you know, we made that commitment last year to move Josh Bay around to get Jet on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, and their and their two backups, or their, the third guy, was Julius McNair. Wow. <laughs> you know, and so yeah. went to the coordinator and said, hey, we've got, we need to change our scheme. And every year in the summer, you know, that's one of the things I always ask the defensive coordinator is that let's don't just have a defense. Let's not just say these are defenses, these are 11 guys. Let's put our best 11 players out there. And that's kind of what we've done right now. Ben Johnson, who is really a linebacker by trade, is starting one of our defensive ends. And he's, you know, Ben's probably six foot, 225 pounds, but he's very strong and athletic. And, uh, you know, but he gives us our best opportunity to pass rush and his quickness on the field. And, um, and so we've taken some guys that are true defensive ends but aren't making as many plays. And right now they're they're not getting as many reps, and so that's that that's a great example there of our coaches using our talent and and using our speed and and playmakers on the field. Because you're not putting the best players on the field, you're putting the best players at their position on the field. And I guess that's the same in every sport. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like having I mean, two good shortstops. Well, it's when A. Rod went to the Yankees yeah, and yeah. they had to put him in a position because they didn't want to move Derek Jeter. And and we do that on offense a lot too. I mean, as far as We've got four good backs that we feel solid about, but uh, you know you need Jason McNair to get his touches. So, but if he gets 20, he, but his body is not a 25 carry guy in a game in certain situations. So that's why we move him to wide receiver and he gets another back on the field. And um, you know, same way with Kenny Jones, we put him at tight end, fullback, because he's one of our best 11 football players. And let's find different personnel groupings to keep him on the field, not just say, okay, because we're going four wide receivers, he's got to come out. No, Kenny Jones is one of the best football players in this conference. He needs to be on the field. Mm-hmm. Well, what other job do you have to make all those uh, decisions <laughs> and have parents call you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk uh, quickly. We're about out of time before we talk about Thursday night's game. Uh, Jacksonville State loses to Chattanooga. Uh, Jacksonville State ranked 10th. Uh, Chattanooga was 23rd. That was at Chattanooga, though, 38-17 the final. Uh, you know, I, I won't say I didn't, th- you know, that it didn't surprise me because it didn't. Yeah. I well, mean, you told me off the air the other night. You said they're going to, they got a handful of Chattanooga. You know, Jacksonville's not as good as they thought they were going to be. Um, 
And, uh, you know, you got Jeep Wade and Marcus Satterfield, two guys on our old staff that are there. So we run similar offenses. So they were able to watch the tape of us against Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. And so now there's no surprises to them. They were able to incorporate similar offensive, uh, offensive and then and attacked it a little bit more in the air, uh, although they were taking big chunks of yards. And so, uh, you know, 508 yards, but they got touchdowns to where we only got the field goals. And so that was the difference. And, uh, you know, they pretty much put them away in the third quarter. Let me run through the other scores in case you missed out. Tech beat Maryville 56-7. That was on the 8th on Thursday. Northwestern won over Eastern Illinois 42-21. Murray shut out Mississippi Valley State 39-0. EKU over Missouri State 28-24. That was in Richmond. Jackson State beat Tennessee State 35-29. Any of those games stand out to you other than Jacksonville State and Chattanooga? Yeah, the uh, Murray State, I don't care who you're playing. <clears throat> you know, you throw up a shutout. That's six quarters in a row. They ain't getting up a point, so we'll definitely have our hands full uh, the next week. That's impressive. Uh, EKU, um, you know, got the quarterback back. They put some points up on the board this week. They should have beat uh, Kansas State with their backup quarterback the week before. So, uh, matter of fact, the guys from Chattanooga play EKU this week, and they text me early in the day and said, hey, they're, they're real deal. They, uh, the difference is EKU just plays solid defense. They don't do anything. Uh, they make you earn every dollar, uh, you know, every yard that you get. So you can't really scheme them as much as you could, um, as you could Jacksonville State. So it's difficult. Union College, the opponent Thursday at Graham Stadium. It is the home opener. Tell us about this NAIA school. Well, yeah, you, you know, they shut somebody out this past week, uh, uh, Kentucky Christian. I don't care who you are. You, you throw a zero up there for four quarters. Obviously, you're getting better. Besides that, just watch one game of tape on them, and then one game from last year. They'll be a, a three-three team, a three-down. They'll run the uh, run zones. They'll throw the football down the field, and they'll blitz you on defense. So uh, we got to get our first win at home. Okay, thank you, Coach, and thanks for letting us visit with Ty too. I need you out there at the game Thursday night. Please come out and support Skyhawks. Six o'clock.